Hey everybody, Nick here from Windy City Astrophotography. In this video, I'm going to be capturing light from star-forming regions, which isn't all that unique. But in this case, we're going to go extragalactic. So let's image the Andromeda Galaxy in Hydrogen Alpha. So we've had a bit of a stretch here in Chicago of nights that are not, uh, not particularly clear for astrophotography. We have had one great clear night that was actually back for the near total lunar eclipse in November. And for that, an excellent chance to get out there and do some imaging uh, of that eclipse. So I was able to use my old optical refractor, my Newtonian 8-inch. I put it on the SEM40 mount and uh, got some nice images as that eclipse progressed. And it was uh, just great having that discreet uh, astronomical event that we actually had some clear weather for, which doesn't, of course, always happen. So that was exciting. Since then, though, uh, not great. Uh, a whole bunch of very cloudy nights. And then some clear nights, but those with howling winds. And uh, definitely not a good chance to get out there with the scope and do any deep sky astrophotography. I had a, a video recently, though, about an option for nights like those, serious star trails, using uh, uh, just a DSLR to capture the light of Sirius as it twinkles through the atmosphere. A chance there to uh, really get a unique image and something that, in a way, kind of makes the most of an otherwise fairly unusable night for astrophotography. Well, finally, though, a couple nights ago, we had one of those clear and calm nights, at least for a few hours before midnight. So I got a good chance to get out there and do some imaging. And in this case, I decided not to start a new object or anything like that. I wanted to add a, a little something extra, a little something special to an image that I already had. You may have seen my video for my dark sky trip out to the Green River Wildlife Management Area, a Bortle 4 sky zone, and a place where I was able to do some broadband imaging, uh, able to image the Witch Head Nebula and the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, in that video, I talked about broadband imaging and how that's a little bit trickier to do from the city, but is a great time to do it when you go to a dark sky with these broadband objects, objects like reflection nebulae, like the Witch Head, and also galaxies like Andromeda. In that case, you don't really want to use a narrowband filter because you'd be missing just so much of that amazing light that's coming from those objects. However, there is a good case to be made to image the Andromeda galaxy and other large galaxies in hydrogen alpha light. And the reason for that is you can actually capture some of the star forming and other active regions in that galaxy. So narrowband imaging, as I've talked about before, is a fantastic option from the city. All that light pollution, you really don't want to have to deal with that. So you can use special filters that only allow through about 1% of the light and block out 99% of that light pollution. Now, that's not going to be a whole lot of use if there's nothing to see in that 1% gap. But in the case of hydrogen alpha, a very specific wavelength, right around 656 nanometers, very red light. In that case, you're able to image some of the most abundant light that's out there in the universe. This light that's emitted by these hydrogen atoms that are in areas where they're being bombarded by radiation, areas where there's a lot of star formation, maybe an exploding star. And in those cases, this hydrogen gets ionized, becomes excited. And then as it releases that energy, it's released in very distinct packets of light. And in the case of hydrogen at this very specific 656 nanometers, and that uh, filter can be tuned to that light, and you can see this amazing light even from the city. So I was here in the city for this imaging run of Andromeda, and in this case I was able to capture some of those star-forming regions. So think about that. When I'm talking about imaging, uh, you know, the California Nebula or the Hart Nebula, maybe the North American Nebula here from Chicago, those are areas in our own galaxy that are emitting less light. Well, now I'm able to turn that attention towards the Andromeda galaxy, two and a half million light years away, and still be able to see uh, regions like that, even in an entirely different galaxy from the Milky Way. So let me show you what I was able to get here in Pixinsight. So we've got the red, green, and the blue. So this is all the data from the dark sky trip that I was able to take. Great data, nice and clean, about an hour per filter. So about three hours total integration here, which on the Rasa is plenty. It's a very nice amount of uh, integration time. And I was able to put that, that together into a, just a great image. I can show that to you here, right here. And yeah, so very happy with this. Lots of great detail. I was able to kind of separate the nice warm glow of the more metallic stars here in the center of the galaxy, and then these 
more uh, young, bright, and blue stars out in the outer reaches of the uh, Andromeda Galaxy. So I was really quite happy with that. Uh, but I did want to add this uh, hydrogen alpha idea. I hadn't actually done this with an image before, combining the RGB with the hydrogen alpha. So it was going to be a nice, uh, nice challenge for me. So I ended up doing that. And the way I did it, I was able to capture about 90 minutes, as I said, of this hydrogen alpha light. Let's get this uh, out of the way. I was able to image about 90 minutes of hydrogen alpha light. And let me show you what that capture looked like. So you can see it is, uh, well, <laughs> it's not quite what you might expect. It's not a whole lot of data. It's not like, oh my gosh, I've finally captured everything there is to see there. You can tell compared to, let's say, the red imagery over here, it's definitely, uh, I would say, missing something. It's definitely not as much to be seen as you have with the red filter. However, what you are seeing here is some of the amazing star forming regions that are right in here. And if you compare that field of view with the red, you can see it's just different. You can still see some of those areas. There is quite a bit of light in there, a lot of radiation uh, within those, uh, those regions. But here it's really isolated. You can tell just where that hydrogen alpha is emitting that light. So what I ended up doing is I followed a tutorial online by the great YouTube channel Entering Into Space. I've used his stuff a lot, uh, plenty of fantastic uh, walkthroughs in PixInsight for what you might want to do. And I was able to use uh, two PixInsight uh, expressions here. So first to isolate the HA. So taking this image, which has a lot of stars and some glow around the galaxy, I really wanted to isolate just the areas of the star formation. I was able to do that here with this expression, the 3.5, that's actually the band pass in nanometers of my filter. So that's what I put in there. And then the 25, I actually played around with that a lot. Um, uh, went up over 100 and down well below 25, just to find a, a, a sweet spot, basically, where that would happen. So what I ended up getting, as I applied that uh, to, it's kind of, it's a new image created from a combination of the red and the HA. This is what I was able to get. And you can see it's just, really just highlighting those very active areas. Not a whole lot else to be seen. There's a little bit more in the core, but that's about it. It's just enough to add that little pop to the red channel. So I took that and actually applied this expression to the red channel. So it was uh, basically taking this and saying, okay, add, add the uh, hydrogen alpha to that. And uh, we saw what we got. So take these away. What I ended up getting was this, which as you compare it to the red on the left and the red with the HA on the right, maybe not a huge difference, but if we zoom in on some of these active regions, I think you'll see quite a difference. If we match what we're seeing here, it's maybe a little bit subtle in this view, but you can definitely see quite a bit more pop on a few of these areas where there is quite a bit of hydrogen alpha light coming through. Now, from there, I combined R, G, and B in a channel combination. I, of course, did the uh, noise reduction. I stretched it. I was able to do more noise reduction. Uh, did the color calibration, the background neutralization, and then doing some saturation curves and various things to bring out the galaxy, make sure I got the nice warm glow in the center and the nice blue uh, coming out from the outer arms of the galaxy. And then eventually what came out, and I really didn't have to push too hard for it, was this image here. So here we're able to see, gosh, just a lot of really nice data. Look how this red pops out in those active regions. A lot of really nice ones. Right over here, this whole string uh, com contrasting with the blue. I think that just looks really fantastic. I was really happy with how that turned out. Now comparing the two, if we bring this back down and uh, let's say we zoom into this area right here and then compare it, to just the RGB. You can see it's a difference for sure. Um, yeah, it's just a little pop, a little bit of extra color that's in there. And it just adds a little bit of information really as, as far as what's going on in that galaxy, some of these dynamic regions that we can see. So I was quite happy with this. I think it's a really, uh, really nice image. I think maybe I'd probably bring the black point uh, up a little bit. I think it was maybe clipped just slightly here, but overall, I was quite happy with, with how it turned out. 
So number one, this was an improvement over my previous imaging of the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, I had done that all from Chicago in the past. When I had first gotten the Rasa, very limited integration time, and uh, honestly not as much uh, not as much confidence or ability in uh, editing all of that together with the separate channels and combining those. Um, still a good image that I had, but uh, I was definitely happy to get to a dark sky and really try it again, try and get some good clean data. And then this is also kind of a cool technical thing to do to be able to take essentially four sets of data, the R, the G, and the B. Those were all captured from a dark sky site weeks ago. And then weeks later to come back from a totally different uh, imaging location and use a different filter, uh, attempt to get the camera to uh, roughly the same orientation on the, the telescope, that was close enough, and then combine all that data together and get this image that is a, truly a combination of a bunch of different uh, locations and filters all into one image. And there's something else that I kind of like about viewing an image like this. It kind of uh, spurs my imagination a little bit. I don't know if there's actually uh, aliens out there, extraterrestrials. I kind of like to think that there are, and we'll probably never know. Uh, they may have been around long in the past, or they'll be here long after we're gone. But I like to think if they're out there and they're in the Andromeda galaxy, these beings might have something like a telescope where they can look out at the night sky. Maybe they have a hobby like astrophotography where they're able to get images of some of these things from a, whatever the equivalent of a backyard is. And these things, let's say this is the Rosette Nebula right here. And uh, right here would be the heart and the soul, perhaps. I know the distances probably aren't exact here, but just imagine for a second that that's the case. Those would be, let's say, the most popular objects uh, on whatever passes for social media uh, for them. They'd be uh, posting their, their pictures of those things that they had taken. Whereas here, I'm just struggling to see some of these, but I'm still able to do it with the same wavelength of light the same physical principle in the universe of this light being emitted by these active regions in a galaxy. Now think about this as well. In that sky of these beings in the Andromeda galaxy, there'd be a little smudge of light in part of the sky, and they'd be able to see, perhaps with better eyes than ours or with cameras similar to what we have, uh, they'd be able to see another galaxy, a spiral galaxy. And they'd be able to catch some of these star-forming regions and active regions in the galaxy. The things that we know of as maybe the Heart and the Soul Nebula, the Orion Nebula, the Rosette Nebula. These places that I'm familiar with and able to image from my backyard. So it'd be, it's kind of a duality there. They're seeing what we see of the Andromeda Galaxy. They're seeing that of the Milky Way from that distance away. So anyway, kind of a, a flight of fancy there. Uh, who knows if that's actually the case, if anybody or anything is looking back at us uh, from across the, uh, the intergalactic distance there, but certainly something interesting to think about. So overall, very happy with this image, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more clear nights here. I'd love to be able to do some more uh, kind of live catch-up on what's going on with my imaging as the night goes on, uh, but we may be uh, doing a few more tutorials and maybe some equipment walkthroughs as well if uh, the clouds hold out. So if you found this video helpful, definitely give it a like. That'll help others find it as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to Windy City Astrophotography. Clear skies, and we'll see you next time.